Hello again, folks. It is me, Maximus. Hope you're having a great day. We're talking about some more military hardware in a recent release that has come from Rheinmetall. Now, if anyone knows how to build amazing military equipment, Rheinmetall definitely has a high-end capability in producing any kind of military equipment. Uh, and IFVs are definitely something they're getting right. They're ticking the boxes in every way. I myself have always had a very strong fascination with new modern day IFV technology, whether it be the Puma, the Ajax, the Lynx, all these new vehicles that are coming out fascinate me to no end because I have been quite heavily related to the Warrior and its experiences that I've had with it. And I love to see what is going to potentially overrun the Warrior eventually. You know, the Warrior hopefully uh, will last many years to come with the new tower upgrade that it's going to get. But I can almost assure you that in the, you know, next 10 to 20 years, the British Army and other forces around the world will continually try and look for new armoured fighting vehicles. And some of these vehicles that are coming out today are not only very, very capable, but also damn expensive. One of the vehicles that is really interesting, and I have done a video on this vehicle in the past, is the Lynx KF-41. Now, the Puma, which I've also done a video on, um, is this extraordinary piece of equipment. They, they really do know how to make some really good bits of kit. Uh, the interesting thing here is that Rheinmetall has a 50% share of the Puma's IFV funding, um, which is currently being procured by the Bundeswehr. Apparently, Rheinmetall isn't quite happy it's only getting 50% of the profits, so they develop their own IFV. It appears that it's broadly based on the Marda system, which is to be replaced, obviously, by the Puma. The turret is somewhat similar to that of the Puma, except it's manned and slightly bigger. It can have a 35mm cannon, whereas the Puma can only have a 30mm cannon at the moment. Basically, this vehicle will soon compete against the Puma, the CV-90 and ASCOD in the Czech IFV replacement competition, and since the competition was announced, three of the candidates, except for the Puma, have unveiled updated variants. But with the Puma, it was arguably one of the best vehicles of the bunch by far in the first place. The other variants are the Ascod with the UT-30 and the HitFact 120mm turrets and the CV-90 Mark IV. The Puma really is, overall in my eyes, one of the best vehicles out there. It's very high-tech, very modern. The prices aren't publicly known, so we can only guess that the prices of past contracts with the Puma are indeed quite expensive. The Lynx hasn't been sold to anyone yet though, so who knows what the price tag is going to be. It depends on a lot of equipment too. If you add a bunch of requirements that require additional modifications, you can get the price very high on supposedly cheap vehicles. For example, the British Ajax, based on the Ascod, is almost as expensive as the Puma. The exact requirements really aren't quite known yet. If Lynx does live up to its marketing, it might actually even be better than the Puma. For example, the Puma can only carry six infantrymen, but the current Czech mechanized infantry structure requires at least seven seats in each IFV. This isn't going to work then. Lynx can supposedly carry up to nine. Lynx is also supposed to be highly modular. A part of the structure should be easy to swap for specialized variants such as ambulances, recovery vehicles, mortar carriers, and Puma doesn't have such an option, and the range of variants developed from the Bundeswehr is much smaller than that of what the Chesek army or potentially other armies need. Overall, this vehicle has a lot of potential and it's a massive contender to the Puma. I would really love to see this vehicle in my own country's armed forces, and you know, just the look of this thing is incredible. It, it has to be, in my eyes, one of the sexiest looking IFVs I've ever seen. Like. I'm not into the whole, you know, stealth, cutting edge, weird angled armor that's all over modern day vehicles now. But this vehicle really does have a very sleek and very practical look. I mean, there's no requirement to have bits and pieces slapped all over the vehicle. The reality is most armored infantry units are going to put stuff all over the vehicle. That's just what happens. You give infantry soldiers a big heavy duty vehicle, they're going to customize it and do whatever they want. But... In terms of it just being its own standalone vehicle, it just looks outstanding. It does have some rather key features that, uh, you know, some of the other vehicles out there, the other contenders, don't quite have. So, typical Rhine Metal, they made a fantastic promotional video, which you're looking at right now without the music, because I'm probably going to get a copyright strike for it. Um, but uh, it just, they've done a very good job of making this vehicle very nice and pretty and showcasing it very, very nicely. They did release it quite recently. Um, 
and it's basically their version of a high-tech IFV that they want to fit with the Lance 2.0 turret. It's armed with a Wotan 35 dual feed cannon which fires standard 35 by 228 mm ammunition with a 7.62 mm coaxial machine gun. A unique feature of this turret is that it has the flexible mission pods fitted either side, which either allows for the installation of subsystems, including two spike anti-tank missile systems, just so you know that's my favourite anti-tank missile, and also the potential for non-line-of-sight strike loitering munitions, UAVs or even electronic warfare packages. Again, relating back to that modular warfare that most militaries around the world are looking for. A computerized fire control system is also fitted, as are Rheinmetall's stabilized electro-optical sight systems and acoustic shooter location systems. The basic hull is welded steel, to which a modular armor package and internal spool liners are fitted. Survivability is enhanced by the installation of a hard kill active defense system and the Rossi multispectral 360 degrees smoke obscuring system, which again, I've done a video on. The KF-41 has a gross vehicle weight of about 44 tons, with a stretch potential up to 50 tons, so she's not lightweight, but doesn't have to be. It's carrying infantry soldiers, and to be honest, in my own opinion, I feel that protection of soldiers is more important than mobility, and adding in a little extra armor on there or the superstructure of the vehicle to protect those inside, yeah, I'd definitely take it with a pinch of salt. It is powered by a Lebeer diesel engine powering at 1,140 horsepower, so a very powerful engine, coupled to a rank fully automatic transmission which gives a top speed of 70 kilometers an hour. It has a flexible suspension system developed by the Australian company Supershock, and a key feature of the KF-41 is it's a common drive module and flexible mission module, which I pretty much said before, uh, that is the key focus that they've put on here, the selling contributing factor to this vehicle is it's modular, and they want vehicles that are customizable, that they don't have to just buy one vehicle and that's it, now I have to buy the other variants, the repair, the ambulance, no, no, no. That is what's going to happen, I think, for the majority of vehicles in the future. Everything's going to be modular. We're going to have turrets that can go onto other vehicles. We're going to have, you know, uh, everything's going to be swapped out. It is. It's just the way it's going to go. Now, I know I keep harping on about this modular thing, but it is quite important. The reconfiguration from the flexible mission modules that they put on these things only takes eight hours to potentially change, which overall gives a huge operational requirement market. That is a massive, massive help to those in the battle group that require different variants. You could one minute have, you know, 30 or 40 armored personnel carriers with no turret that you just want speed, you just want capacity. The next minute you could have, you know, 30 or 40 infantry fighting vehicles with turrets on top of them. You know, they're customizable and that is incredible. The first example of the Lynx has taken part in the competition to supply the Czech Republic with up to 210 of these vehicles to replace its currently deployed BMP-2, which I have a love for anyway. Rheinmetall will also enter the Lynx to meet the Australian Army Land 400 Phase 3 requirement. Now, there's a lot of controversy going on with the, you know, Land 400 program, and I'm not going to get into it right now because it's a whole new video. Um, but folks, let's just be real here. It's a very sleek, very sexy looking armored fighting vehicle, and I think it has great capabilities. You know, I've said it many times in the past, I feel that most infantry fighting vehicles today should have those modules on the side of the vehicle that can, you know, add to the fighting effect. You know, anti-tank missiles being plugged on the sides. A lot of people disagree with that. You know, Bradleys aren't designed to fight tanks, they're there to drop off troops. But if you can stick a module on the side of the vehicle to allow it to engage heavy duty targets, why not have that capability? So, do we have a game changer here? Is the Lynx really this massive, new, controversial vehicle that's going to wipe the floor with other designs? No, I don't think so. I really don't. I think, you know, the Bundeswehr has done very well in selecting the Puma. They all have their own specific benefits and, and limitations. Ajax for the British Army, I'm very proud to know that the Ajax is coming in service. Again, I've done a video on that. Uh, the Lynx KF-41, though, I think has a huge potential to going into militaries around the world. It's fantastic that the Czech Armed Forces are going to start procuring these vehicles and putting them into place. Um, but, you know, it's just, as I mentioned before, it's just a stunning looking vehicle. And so do the other modern day IFEs that are coming out right now look. But this one just would be a dream for me to play on. Those spike anti-tank missiles pouring out the side of it. Um, you know, it's capability in 1,000 horsepower engine in there. That's a lot of power for a vehicle that weighs 40 tons. 
Uh, I can't wait to see what the future is for this vehicle, and I'm sure many of you will agree. Folks, if you have any questions or concerns about this vehicle, please leave them in the comments section below. If I made any mistakes, I do apologize. Please, again, correct me. Uh, and I hope you all um, can basically be as excited as I am in seeing this vehicle in its future. Folks, if you want to support my channel, I'd really appreciate you check out my Patreon account. It would re really, really would mean a lot to me um, for the support towards that uh, support page. And that's it, folks. Have a wonderful day and bye-bye.